Okay, so a client uh, brought me their son's computer. Um, it's a Dell G5 5587, and it was coming up with a, a blue screen um, immediately upon boot, um, saying that there was a problem with the, uh, the files in Windows. I was able to get into the recovery mode by rebooting several times, and the option to uninstall the latest feature update for Windows 10 uh, worked and got the computer up and running. So I went in and um, I had to clean up quite a few things. Um, I can't really show you that because it's got his name all over it, but um, he's a gamer, tons of things about um, game updates and um, various mods and things like that. Uh, lots of browser redirects uh, in Chrome that was sending him to the wrong places. But I'm pretty sure the problem was um, was initiated by the, the low amount of uh, drive space. If I come to File Explorer, the C drive, it was down to 500 megabytes free. I've got it up to about three gigabytes free. And he's also got, so that's a, it's a 128 gigabyte solid state drive and where Windows is installed. And he's also got a, a data drive, which is the D drive, which is a, a one terabyte drive. And I can see that he is installing as much as he can on this drive to help uh, make this not so full, but it's to the point where it can't be uh, cleaned up anymore and keep all of this stuff that he wants to use. Um, so what I'm gonna do is replace this 128 gigabyte solid state drive, which is a um, M.2 uh, SATA based interface drive with a, um, it's a PCIe or NVMe type drive, which would be a little bit faster than the SATA based. Um, yeah, so 500 gigabyte, Samsung uh, 980 is what I'm going to put in here. But before I can do that, we need to transfer Windows and his files and all of his programs onto it. It's called cloning is the process. What I'm going to do is take this and put it into a USB to NVMe external enclosure. These are about $25 on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description of the video to it. Um, so you just put it in there. Um, there's, there's, it comes with an option to actually screw it in. I use this so often I don't bother screwing it in. Just having this uh, cover on will hold it in place. Just like that. And if we plug it in. Here the computer find it. We can go look for it in Device Manager to verify it's there. Um, if you right click on Start and go to Device Manager, and then Disk Drives. It's this SSK um, SCSI disk device. It's saying that because it's in this external enclosure, but it's a Samsung. But we can also see the um, 128 gigabyte um, M.2 SATA based drive and also the one terabyte uh, Western Digital there. But to get the everything that's on this 128, which is the C drive, copied over, I'm going to go to Google and do a search for Samsung SSD downloads. And if you do this, it should bring you to this link, SSD tools and software. And what we're looking for is the migration software. Scroll down a little bit, data migration, and get it downloaded. Hmm. So it's saying it may be harmful. Do you want to keep it? I'll keep it. That's strange. I would have thought that uh, Google Chrome would have recognized that as a, a safe program, but it's fine. We'll click to start it and run through its installer. Okay, so data migration, select the drive. It's automatically selected our 128 gigabyte 
solid state drive. And for target drive, I'm going to come down here and select drive. And it sees it here as a Samsung SSD 980, 500 gigabyte, which is true. So it shows you what the capacity uh, or how much space is going to be taken up after the, um, the copy. And I'll just hit start. So this computer will shut down after data migration in 20 seconds. So after it's done, it'll shut the computer down. It says when cloning starts, all data on the target drive, which is uh, blank right now, won't be uh, recoverable, which is fine. There's nothing there. And if it was, we, we want to do this. Also, files on the source drive that are open cannot be cloned. So basically, this is telling you don't use the computer. Don't open it. Just leave it alone while it's doing this. So I'm going to say OK. And down here at the bottom, it's going to start giving us an indication of how long it'll take and percentage and all that. But basically, I'm just going to walk away and let this do its thing. When I come back and it's done, the computer should be shut down. And then we can go about replacing um, the drive with this new one. All right, I just happened to come back and catch it shutting down. Screen's off, but I can still hear it. Okay, it shut down. I'm going to disconnect the USB device. And I'm actually going to blow some uh, some dust off this thing. I'm not sure how it got this dirty, but it could use a little basic cleaning. Close it up, turn her over, and this is just held in place with one screw here at the top. It's captive, it doesn't come out. So then you just slide this slightly and pull up, and there you go. So there's the solid state drive we'll be replacing. Um, it's made by SanDisk and it's 128 gigabyte. And this is the SATA type of drive. And we're gonna be putting in a M.2 uh, NVMe. They look very similar. Um, very often it's difficult to tell the difference between them. Most of the time, but not always, when you look at them, the SATA based will have two cutouts here on the, the connector. Whereas an NVMe will only have one. Not always, but usually. Um, so you just uh, you put it in at about a 30 degree angle, push it in, and then hold it down, put the screw back in. So the computer came with this uh, SATA based one. Um, when I did a search for the model number, on uh, Dell's support website, I was able to find a PDF with the specs that showed that it could take both SATA and PCIe M.2 solid state drives. So this should work out fine. We're not doing anything with the hard drive. There's uh, the one terabyte drive there. We could add more RAM, um, but that would be an easy thing to do in the future in case he wants to. There's one stick, there's an extra spot here. I'm gonna give it a, uh, a blow. <laughs> So one of these is for the CPU and the other is for the graphics adapter. Stuff just coming out of this thing. So I was holding it so it doesn't spin too fast. You just kind of put your, your finger. Let's see, I believe that's the... The exhaust is on the, the back here, so I just kind of sprayed in there. Okay. If you want to get yourself one of these, uh, it's called DataVac. Um, 
I'll do a put a link in the description of the video for it. Um, they're usually 60 bucks, but I, they sometimes go for 100. So try and catch it on sale. 70 would be uh, 70 dollars would be pretty much uh, a good uh, price to pay for it as well. So we've got the new drive in there. It's got all of his uh, his windows, his files, programs, everything copied onto it. Um, if you were gonna replace the battery, it's right here. It's just held in with some screws and it's got a battery connector you have to kind of uh, pull out, but we won't go into that. The Wi-Fi adapter is probably right under there. It looks, no, it's here. That, not sure what's under there, but we're not gonna worry about that. So if we were wanting to replace the Wi-Fi adapter, it's right here. There's the CMOS battery, which uh, keeps the BIOS settings when the, uh, the computer um, loses all uh, main battery charge and it's not plugged in. Okay. So let's just put this back on. Put the bottom in first and then press on it. All right, so if the clone was successful, it should just boot up and go into Windows. It was not successful. So you'll need to use recovery tools. So something went wrong. I'm going to hit escape to go to UEFI firmware settings, which is the BIOS on the uh, on the laptop. Okay, so system information, and we'll go down to storage. So it's showing a drive there in M.2 PCIe and then the one terabyte Western Digital hard drive. Strange that it didn't work. Let's exit out of that, which should make the computer restart. Ah, we're getting a spinny thing here. Why did it work initially? So this looks like it's booting into Windows. Okay, well that's strange. All right, start. We'll go to Documents and then switch over to this PC. Uh, okay, so there's a C drive with uh, the 500 gigabytes of space, lots of free space. Okay, uh, I don't know why it would have failed on the initial boot. Um, let's give this thing a full shutdown. I'm going to click start, go to power, hold down shift as I click shutdown, and that will completely shut down the computer. If you don't hold down shift, most computers, uh, modern ones anyway, it will put it into kind of a hybrid sleep where it's not really off. Okay, so it's fully shut off. I'm going to turn it back on. Okay, yeah, and there's the the Windows spinny thing. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if when the Samsung migration software shut the computer down, it uh, it put it into a hybrid sleep, um, as opposed to what we did just now, holding down shift as we click shut down. And that could mean that it was expecting to see the uh, the other drive as it booted up. So if you have that problem where after a clone of a drive, uh, the computer gives you a blue screen immediately, turn it off, turn it back on, and it should then find the drive. And it looks like we're good here. I'm going to log back in again. Okay, so yeah, we're uh, we're back in. Plenty of free space now. Um, so just to go over what we did, um, he had a 128 gigabyte solid state drive in there, which is this guy right here. Uh, it was running out of space. What we did is we cloned all the files and programs 
Windows everything from this drive onto a new uh, M.2 NVMe solid state drive, uh, 500 gigabyte in capacity. Shut the computer down, blew some dust out of it, which really needed it. Uh, did the swap out of the old drive for the new. The computer didn't boot up the first time, um, but on a subsequent reboot, it did work. Pretty sure it was because um, it, Windows was not completely shut down after the Samsung software did its job and it was expecting the old drive on that first boot, but it picked up the new one on the second and it's working with plenty of free space. Thanks for watching.